Good. Good! But not great. If you really want to wow them, we got to do it faster. It's Christmas time and everyone is getting ready. That is how to get out to the court, huh? I think only hook could you. That is how to get out to the court, huh? <laughs> Oh, 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 this is gonna hurt a lot. 
Oh boy, Santa's coming over to my house and he's going to give me all kinds of gifts and whatnot. This is the greatest Christmas ever. But wait a minute. What if he's not real? And what if I'm not getting my presents? What am I going to do? Me? Yeah, I know. I gotta believe! Ho, ho, ho. I mean, ho, ho, ho! You have quite the imagination, little boy. Er, dog thing. Oh, <laughs> 
because I was always better than you. You and your bunkum chums can't hold the candles, my creative genius. Oh no! We're surrounded by evil penguins! What are we gonna do? I don't know. X Starb. Give it up, you and you're surrounded. You'll never get away with this, Mr. Penguin! It's too late. We already have. No! <laughs> oh. It was only a dream. Wait. Oh my god. It's Christmas! Oh yeah, time to open my present. Oh, stop crying, woman. God. Why? Because I took your present. <laughs> what? Wait. Why did you laugh like that? Oh, crap. She's on to us. I have endeavored in this ghostly little tale to raise the ghost of an idea which shall not put my viewers out of humor with themselves, with each other, with the season, or with me. Oh, but he was a tight-fisted hand at the grindstone. Scrooge, a squeezing, wrenching, grasping, scraping, clutching, covetous old sinner. Hard and sharp as flint, secret and self-contained, and solitary as an oyster. Heat and cold had little influence on Scrooge. No warmth could warm, no wintry weather chill him. No wind that blew was more bitter than he. Nobody stops him in the street with gladsome looks. My dear Scrooge, how are you? Even the blind man's dogs appeared to know him and would pull their owners away. No eye at all than an evil eye, they appear to say. But what did Scrooge care? It was the very thing he liked. Edge his way along the crowded paths of life, warning all human sympathy, keep your distance.
Christmas. Could there be a more happy and heartwarming time? The coldest heart could not be but bored at the sight of children running, playing with their unfettered hearts. Tis indeed the season to be jolly and to bear goodwill to all men. Oh my God! It's Mo Muppet! Guys, look! It's Mo Muppet! What the? Who, who, who's this? How, how does she get in here? Oh my god, Mel's I am one of your biggest fans. <laughs> it's okay I can have an autograph from you. Oh, that that that's it, right? I, I'm out of here. I, I'm a professional. I, I shouldn't have to deal with this. Get rid of these kids. Aww. Kill that camera. <laughs> oh, uh, that's my friend. Sorry, it, it won't happen again. Oh, I know it won't happen again, Gus Father. You are fired. Man, I'm trying to make a film here about the port to be nice at Christmas. I'm fed up with all this. A Merry Christmas, Uncle. God bless you. Bah, humbug. Christmas a humbug, Uncle? You don't mean that. Oh, I do. Merry Christmas. What reason have you to be merry? You're poor enough. What reason have you to be miserable? You're rich enough. What else can I be, when I live in such a world of fools as this? What's Christmas to you, but a time for paying bills without money? <laughs> Finding yourself a year older, but not an hour richer? If I could work my will, every idiot with Merry Christmas on his lips would be boiled in his own pudding and buried with a stick of holly through his heart. Uncle? Nephew, keep Christmas in your way. Let me keep it in mine. But you don't keep it! Let me leave it alone then. Much good it may do you. Much good has it ever done you. But Uncle, Christmas time is a good time. A kind, forgiving, charitable, pleasant time. The only time in the long calendar of the year when men and women open up their shut-up hearts freely and think of other people as fellow life travelers, not a separate race bound on other journeys. Therefore, Uncle, though it has never put a scrap of gold in my pocket, I believe it has done me good, will do me good, and I say, God bless it! Uncle? Come dine with us tomorrow. Humbug. You and your wife. Why so ever did you get married? Why? Because I fell in love. Love? 
Humbug! The only thing more ridiculous than Merry Christmas! Good afternoon. Uncle, I'll keep my Christmas humor to the very last. Merry Christmas! Good afternoon! At the festive season, men of goodwill desire to make provision for the poor. Two such kindly souls were the next visitors to Scrooge and Marley's. Good afternoon. Do I have the pleasure of addressing Mr. Scrooge or Mr. Marley? Mr. Marley has been dead these seven years. Seven years this very night. Ah. Uh. Well, I have no doubt his charitable spirit lives on your good self. <laughs> At this time, it is more than usually desirable that we should make provision for the poor and destitute who suffer greatly in want of the most basic comforts. Are there no prisons? Does the workhouse no longer exist? They are, sadly, still with us, sir. Yes. The treadmill and the poor law remains in vigor. Both very busy, sir. Oh, I was afraid they'd cease their wondrous course. Gentlemen, good afternoon. I prefer to be alone. I can little afford to make merry myself, and the best afford to make idle people merry. Let the idol partake of those establishments you assure me still thrive. Sir, many would rather die. If they would rather die, they'd better do it and decrease the surplus population. Good afternoon. But, sir, I... I... Good afternoon. It is tempting to think that Scrooge found no joy in life. But Scrooge enjoyed being mean. Scrooge enjoyed every opportunity to trample on another man's spirit. This brings us to his long-suffering servant, Bob Cratchit. Bob Cratchit expected little out of life, asked for little, and got little. Today, he was to ask Scrooge for a day off for Christmas. Christmas! Humbug! You'll want all day tomorrow, I suppose. If it should suit your convenience, sir. It's not convenient, nor is it fair. If I was to stop half a crown for it, you'd find yourself ill-used, no doubt. But Mr. Scrooge, sir, tis but one day of the year. A poor excuse for... Be here all the earlier the next morning. Yes, sir. Mr. Scrooge, sir. Thank you, sir. Oh, Scrooge. How cold and empty is your world. And yet, love and kindness is all around you. If only you'd open your eyes. Let us visit Bob Cratchit and Tiny Tim and see some such love and kindness. As was the case for many, life was not always easy for the Cratchit family. Tiny Tim's leg was lame and his health was always poor. Despite this, Tiny Tim's thoughts rarely dwelled on himself. Indeed, he thought often of others. 
I enjoyed the church so, so much today, Father. The singing was wonderful. So did I, Tim. So joyful and harmonious. And Tim, I said you can call me Bob when we're alone. Just don't tell your mother. She'd boil me in treacle and sell me to Scrooge as a pudding. Oh, Father, LOL. It's Bob. And whatever is LOL. It's a new word I made up. Like it? Hmm. It'll never catch on, my lad. Bob, this may sound peculiar. Do tell me, Tim. Well, you know, sometimes people stare at me because I'm crippled. I do, Tim. I wish they didn't. But I fear some people don't know how to use the brains that God gave them. It does vex me so. No, Bob. Don't be vexed. I was thinking. Maybe at this time, when people may be sad, it may lift their spirits to know, well, at least they aren't crippled. And by lifting their hearts, maybe I'm doing something good in this world. Oh, Tim. You raise my spirits with every passing moment. I love you more than anything in God's creation. There is not one thing that I'd change. Not one blessed thing, and that's the truth. Silent night, holy night. All is calm, all is bright. Round yon virgin mother and child. Holy infant so tender and mild. Humbug. Scrooge took his usual melancholy meal in a melancholy tavern with a melancholy drink. At the end of this night of wild revelry, Scrooge returned to his home, formerly the property of his business partner, Jacob Marley. Jacob Marley had not so much as entered Scrooge's head in the seven years since his death. Tonight was to be very different. So very, very different. Darkness was cheap, which well suited Scrooge, but he was so unsettled from the apparition, he sought comfort in an extra candle. The comfort would not last. I do, I do. 
spirit. Why do you walk the earth? And why come to me? It is recorded of love that the spirit within lives among his fellow man. And if you not do so in life, he is content to do so in death. Whoa, it's me! Spirit, why are you so chained? Jacob, I pray thee, please, speak comfort to me. I am not to give. I can say, you and me stands for your life. But Jacob, you were such a good man of business. That God was my business, well, the child was even Whose house? Ron's house. Whose house? Ron's house. Whose house? Say what? Ron's house. Hey, uh, Muppet, you got a minute? Well, if it's to pull your finger, no. No, I don't. I wanted to talk to you about that gravy line. What, there's more of gravy than the gravy about you? Yeah, great line. Classic. Yeah, it's a great line. Classic. But maybe it, uh... What? Well, maybe not great. More like it sucks. What? Yeah, I think we should drop it. And while we're at it, why don't we fire the script writer? Fire the script writer. You do know that line was in the original, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, original? Uh, so, I didn't write this. It's an all-time classic. It's up there with Shakespeare. It's by Charles Dickens. Yeah, I knew that. You can't beat that old Charlie Chaz Chuck. Good old Charles Dickens. Dickens. Oh, right. Dickens. Oh, and one more thing. Pull my finger. You're an idiot. Marley's ghost bothered Scrooge. Bothered him extremely. Scrooge paced his floor. Was it a dream? Was it a dream? No, Scrooge. It was no dream. Are you the spirit whose coming was foretold to me? I am. Who and what are you? I am for ghosts of Christmas past. Rise. Come with me.
There are those in this cynical world who doubt in magic. I invite you to leave the story for a moment, to go to your window or step outside and look at the night sky. Do you see a star brighter than the rest, a bright light traveling? This Christmas Eve, look out your window, be ready, be waiting. You may see the ghost of Christmas past.